Let's go! It's over. This guy will no longer be a part of LSU football, or at the very least, I hope Ed Orgeron has completely shut the door on this guy. And I understand nothing is official until Georgia actually announces it and pin it to paper, but the bottom line is no matter what happens, even if this guy doesn't end up signing with Georgia, you should not take him back. And I think there's a lot of valuable lessons that we all can learn from this. And if you're Cole Taylor, and if you're Jack Besh, and you're Nick Storrs, or any of the LSU tight ends, I want to first say thank you for doing the right thing and showing up to practice and wanting to be a part of the championship culture in Baton Rouge. But now this is your time. This is your time to show the entire LSU coaching staff that we had the championship level tight ends all along and that we didn't need this guy. And by the way, LSU won without this guy. Now, we are going to touch on so many different things in this video. However, I want to see how great we could be together as a PHL community. I don't want anyone to name this guy. He's not in the title. He's not even in the thumbnail. He's not in any part of this video because I've gotten so many questions asking me to talk about this guy. And I've also gotten so many comments saying, I'm tired of talking about this guy. So this guy will not be named, okay? So that is the number one lesson that we need to take in, in when it comes to this guy is LSU for sure needs to shut the door on this guy. Even if this doesn't work out with Georgia, you will lose a lot of people if you decide to potentially bring back this guy if for whatever reason he doesn't end up signing with Georgia this time around. Point number one I want to make is no one player makes the team, especially at LSU. If someone is not doing what is right, if someone doesn't want to be there, if someone is out of line for whatever reason, no matter how nefarious uh, the act may, they may or may not be doing, obviously you need to move on. And I do feel I need to defend Ed Orgeron before we slide into point number two. There is a football film reason why they wanted to bring back this guy. Because if Cole Taylor was capable of doing what this guy was able to do, LSU wouldn't have spent so much time trying to get back this guy. The problem was Cole Taylor can't do what this guy can do uh, as a receiver or as a blocker, okay? Because... We did a full film study on this very thing, and if you want to watch it, it'll be linked down below. It's also floating in the top right corner of your screen, and uh, look, you, you could just see why Cole Taylor struggled as much as he did, and he even did so some in the spring game, and I like Cole Taylor a lot, but now, of course, he's going to have to step up. I'm just sharing why Ed Wigeron decided to really, and, and the LSU staff, tried to, to really get after getting this guy back. Now, here's the thing. Number one, this guy was the one who put Cole Taylor in this absolutely crappy spot to start as a true freshman with two games left to go. And number two, LSU was still able to win the game despite Cole Taylor struggling. Now, once again, I'm crossing my fingers that Cole Taylor takes a supernatural jump in year two, even though I still think he is a year three development type of guy. But that is why LSU really tried to pursue him. It wasn't so much this guy's actual ability. It's what LSU had left. However, I am super high on Jack Besh. He was my favorite receiver that LSU brought in in this class. And Nick Storrs, of course, has a lot of promise, especially as a blocker. And maybe Jack Besh, for, who, who knows? Maybe LSU won a blah, blah, blah. And maybe LSU runs more for wide receiver set which we talked about in our offensive depth chart piece. I'm going to share a few personal anecdotes because I think a lot of you will relate with this one. Time and resources in the world of college football. Now, first thing, it was justified, all the time and resources, to get this guy, okay? Because he did transform the offense. He did have a great first season. He was a five-star recruit. So, LSU was right and justified in getting this guy to Baton Rouge. And guess what? You should go after the five-star out-of-state guys. It is worth your time and resources to go after them. But no way did LSU could have known that this 
disaster would have happened. I understand as well, let me say this first, I understand as well initially trying to get him back even when he decided to opt out. But looking back on it, once he said that he was going to Florida, LSU should have just moved on and cut ties altogether. Uh, Because look at all the time and resources it took to potentially get him back. Now, I've shared this before on other live streams. I like this guy personally. I have nothing personal against him. However, I do have something against his actions. Now, I've also shared this before. I don't feel comfortable talking about someone else's academics, but it is well known now that there is academic hurdles when it comes to this guy. So we don't even know if he's going to be eligible to play, whether that would have been with LSU or Georgia or JUCO or wherever, Um, because I also had academic struggles. So I feel uncomfortable talking about anyone else's academics because that is a deeply personal thing and some people really struggle with it. But that is part of the discussion here and also may or may not would have been well received by everyone else in the locker room because of how much it took to get this guy back. Now, think about how the team would have felt when this guy has already decided to go to the team that he left, the the, the exact team he left the week before to play you guys the next couple of seasons. Okay, this guy was going to someone on our schedule every single season, and we were just going to take him back. Do you think it would have really been well received by everyone, not only in the locker room, but in the building? Probably not. And even on top of that, all these other guys are in the transfer portal. All these other potential players may not be able to have the ceiling of this guy, but it took all your time to get them. And it's not just Ed Orgeron's really valuable and limited time. It's your offensive coaching staff. It's your offensive teammates that are just teammates in general that tried to re-recruit him back. It's the compliance directors that had to deal with this disaster. So think about all the damage that could have caused. Because do you think all the assistants and compliance directors and, and teammates that were trying to get this guy back were happy uh no because this was tedious childish behavior that they were chasing so that takes a mental toll on you as well these role players that were really putting into work to potentially get this guy back so even if he would have come back and he was productive it may or may not have been worth it because of all the ancillary is that the right way to use that word all the extracurricular damage that it could have caused different people that work and play for the program. Another good example of, of wasted time and resource was Zachary Evans, the five-star running back out of Texas. And the reason why I use this example, because there was red flags galore, much like this guy. Uh, Zachary Evans was suspended before a state championship game, and the team ended up winning without him. And he was suspended because he wouldn't, get off his cell phone before the game. Also, uh, I understand that that's just one mistake. He was also suspended earlier in the season. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know exactly what happened there. But those, I would want to stay away from someone, especially when that 2020 class had such a limited amount of slots. And that potentially could have cost LSU some other players for that slot. Now, they ended up getting uh, Trey Bradford in the end, a running back replacement. But, Still, it, it was too much time and, and, and effort into a player that was risky to begin with. So this point forward, I understand that 17 and 18 year olds characters are, are not going to be, you know, they're not going to be fully formed. They're not going to be an adult, but there are a lot of recruits that are doing the right thing. And I would want to make sure if I was using a slot in one of those recruits, that they were one of those kids that actually did the right thing at all times, or most of the time. Now, point number three is going to be very fascinating, and we must keep slots open for the next few recruiting classes. I understand that this doesn't really relate to this guy, but it kind of sort of does. You notice Georgia not only got this guy, they also got Darian Kendrick. Now, Darian Kendrick 
was a really good defensive back for Clemson that also has some baggage, but still, he, he was a starter in their secondary that has a lot of national experience. Now, of course, he had two rough games in New Orleans, one against us, one against uh, Ohio State, but still, he's a very good player. And Georgia has all these extra slots on the back end of their class to spend it on some 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 potential players that could help them get to the national championship game. Here's the thing. Let's say a, a guy just opened himself up at this point in the process and LSU really wanted him. Well, they couldn't get him now because all their slots are filled up. So, an outside the box thing, which we'll touch on in some recruiting videos upcoming, is you must leave slots open because now more than ever we're going to see more and more players enter the transfer portal and they're going to be immediately eligible for whichever team that they go to and if that's the case you would much rather have guys that have been battle tested join your team and and take your team to the next level and there's really no program in the SEC that has been uh, better served with transfers than LSU. So moving forward, when it comes to you know recruiting slots and classes, understand that, it, and, and this is why it's very important, LSU has taken in all these official visitors. Even if you fall in love with the kid, really evaluate if that player is worth a slot in this class. Um, because, you know, that's going to be very important moving forward because, From this point forward, I want LSU to have as much flexibility in the transfer portal as they possibly can. So maybe uh, looking at this class now, I I would be fine with taking 22 kids, maybe 23, but uh, no more than that because you want to make sure you leave at the very least two slots for kids to come over in the portal. Now, I, I want to put a bow on this because, once again, it doesn't matter. There's going to be Georgia fans or just fans in general in my comment section that's going to say, you, know, you have sour grapes. No, I I want what's best for whichever recruit. If this guy is happier there, I'd rather him not be a part of a team that he doesn't want to be a part of and closer to home and whatever not, whatever else. But what I can say is the same thing I ended with my video yesterday you are not a good teammate. <laughs> you put your team in a bad spot. And I think, you know, he has realized that. And he's got plenty of time for to atone for that. And, of course, mature and become uh, an NFL player or whatever. And I think he obviously has the talent uh, to do such thing. Um, but understand that there are repercussions for actions that you do. And that's the thing. No, I, I, maybe some of you have sour grapes towards him personally. I really don't. It's just the handling of the situation. And this guy's supporting cast and people that are around him did not do him any favors on how this was handled at all. From committing to Florida while at a family dollar to stringing LSU along to all these different things, I'm telling you, there are NFL teams that have already crossed you off their board. And that is the the biggest concern, that there's all these different people that are going to pull all these kids in different directions. And that is, you know, really a sad thing uh, around this whole ordeal. Now, once again, uh, I, I wish him the can't really say I wish him the best because he is in the SEC. I do think uh, from an LSU perspective, it's much rather you much rather him go to Georgia than Florida, even though if you do win the SEC, you're more than likely going to be playing Georgia in the SEC championship game. Um, but still, it is better if he went to the Dogs instead of the Gators. Uh, but still, it, it, you would much rather him have, have gone to uh, just – an out-of-conference school, or preferably one that's never going to go to the playoff. But here we are. Hope you subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Once again, I'm challenging you to not mention this guy's name in our comment section. Um, and we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see who actually uh, abides by that. All right? We got some fun videos that you can watch floating in your face right now. It is power. Hour LSU bomb.
And we got these big tuna steaks tonight. Let's go. <laughs>